everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, my name is Elata Bak, and today I'd like to talk to you about why and how you should nuke your AWS account. Um, let me start with a short survey. Um, by a raise of hands, how many of you ever forgot a running EC2 instance in AWS? Okay, so you can see it's a shared problem. Hopefully after this presentation, you can buy one of these uh, from the money I'm gonna save you. Um, of course, I mean the jackets, not the car. Um, so I work on a project called OpenShift Cluster Manager, OCM for short. Uh, we install a lot of OpenShift clusters on GCP and AWS, uh, mainly on AWS uh, because of Red Hat's offering. And uh, many of them sometimes, um, because we test a lot, we, we use a lot of versions, sometimes uh, clusters just fail from the leading and we leave them running in AWS. So try to delete an, a running OpenShift cluster in uh, uh, AWS, you have to deal with a lot of dependencies. You may have seen it if you ever try to delete an EC2 instance. You uh, delete it, you forget to delete the volume or the disk or anything else. So try to understand all the topology of all the resources in AWS. It's kind of hard and, and you need to understand whatever resource depends on another resource and, and you need to be aware of the right ordering of deletion. So for example, when I started uh, doing this uh, manual work, I tried to uh, delete uh, a VPC for, for example and uh, deleting a VPC blocks uh, blocks me from, uh, I'm sorry, deleting um, the, the VPC is uh, blocked by deleting the subnet. And then I couldn't delete the subnet because the IP address was uh, being used. So um, it became a, a real problem. And uh, when I first started um, doing this manual work, um, I figured, well, I should better automate it because I'm doing it more frequently. And um, once I did it over and over again, I understand, uh, I understood uh, that I also need to handle multiple regions and I need to, uh, of course, be aware of all the uh, dependency graph and I need to repeat it again and again. So this became kind of an agonizing task and um, I thought to myself, well, I should probably avoid reinventing the wheel um, in this case. And uh, I thought somebody probably already resolved this problem before. Um, so I did some research and I found there were actually several tools for uh, handling this kind of situations. And one of the best, found, uh, the best one I found was uh, AWS Nuke, which I'd like to share uh, some thoughts about uh, with you today. So what was interesting, um, I went online on their GitHub uh, repository and it's an open, so open source project and the inter interesting part was that they're dealing with kind of the same problem that we're dealing with only with uh, Kubernetes clusters. So they're installing Kubernetes clusters and uh, having the same problem with uh, cleaning up their AWS account and we are dealing with, with OpenShift clusters. Um, so it was nice to see and I'd like to share with you uh, how you can um, use that tool uh, to clean up your AWS account and reduce your uh, spend. So to use it, you start with uh, defining a config file, which is basically a YAML file. You set up which regions you want to clean. Um, some AWS resources are tied to a specific region, some are not, are global. So you just write global as a region and then you list uh, the accounts that you like to clean. Um, and then you just type AWS nuke minus C and then a path to the config file and then minus minus profile and that contains the AWS profile um, that the AWS nuke would be using to connect to your AWS account and clean things up. So if you download and run this tool, you would see an output which kind of looks, looks like this. Uh, what AWS Nuke would be doing, it would be connecting to your AWS account. It will scan all the resources that you have on your AWS account and it will list whatever it find, finds for, um, which is candidate for deletion. And by default, it will not clean anything. It will just list all the resources. If you do like it to do a cleanup, you would need to add a minus minus no dry run flag that will prompt uh, uh, you if you like to um, actually do the cleanup process. And if you hit yes, then it's gonna do the actual cleanup. Uh, do take in mind that some resources require some waiting for them to get deleted. So what the AWS Nuke would be doing, it's gonna try delete some resource 
if it's going to fail or uh, find it again on another scan, it's going to reattempt deleting it and it will try over and over again until it deletes everything that you asked it to delete. Um, there's also sorts of uh, filtering options for that uh, tool, like um, in my example, I'm uh, trying to delete only, uh, for example, ELBs or EC2 instances, uh, S3 buckets, so I can list them all under the target uh, section of the uh, uh, config file. I can also ask the AWS Nuke to filter out some resources. So for example, in this specific example, I'm avoiding cleaning up my own credentials, my own admin credentials to the account. So I can use that also as filtering out um, these kind of uh, resources. There's other types of filtering options like uh, by value, by regular expression date. I encourage you to go online and read about them. Um, so we started integrating with this tool and everything went um, butter smooth. Um, we have a nightly test suite that runs overnight. It takes roughly two, sometimes three hours to run. And then when developers came in the morning, they, they come, they see the results. And uh, by that time, the cleanup process was cleaning all the stale resources uh, on the AWS account. And it worked good for a while, and then we hit the wall. What happened was that developer came in the morning, he saw some environmental failure, um, sometimes it was something that um, a developer fixed, and they wanted to rerun the test suite. Now, imagine uh, tests are running, creating clusters on AWS, and at the same time, the, the cleanup process was deleting them. So obviously, that became a problem. So we started thinking, how can we avoid deleting resources that are actually being used at the same time? And we figured we couldn't really know if a resource in AWS is actually being used. Um, so uh, we started thinking, how, how can we avoid this problem? And uh, one of the things that uh, came to mind was, well, we, we don't want to rely on the test site. The test can fail, it can crash, it can run from my laptop, and I can be offline. I, I couldn't really rely on asking, are you using this resource? There's no one to talk to at that point. So. Um, we figured, well, the test runs for uh, two, three hours, sometimes four, uh, but never more than five hours. So um, if, it, if the test goes over five hours, it will time out, it will terminate. Um, so we figured everything that is older in AWS, older than five hours, we can safely remove it. We have a dedicated AWS account for the, the, the test, um, so it's, it's safe to remove. Um, the problem was that some AWS resources has a field of creation timestamp, but not all of them. And um, we want to overcome this uh, problem, and we figured, how about we'll add a first scene timestamp, and while we are scanning the resources, um, and if we do it frequently enough, we can add this tagging to each AWS resource, and um, running this frequently enough, the first scene timestamp will be pretty much close to the creation timestamp of that resource. So what we are using, we are using the AWS client that the AWS Nuke is using to connect and talk and scan the AWS account. We are using that client to also tag the resources while it scans them. So the AWS Nuke will be connecting to the AWS account. It will start scanning all the resources. While doing so, it will tag first scene timestamp on all of them. And then once it finds a resource that is older than five hours, it just adds it to the resources that are candidate to get deleted. And that worked great for us. Um, we are um, uh, working with this uh, method for a while. It uh, reduced our spend um, from looking like this every time uh, we hit a quota issue or um, we uh, got an alert from AWS that we're spending too much money um, and then developers came and started manually deleting stuff. Uh, we went to this, so it's very uh, lower, lower uh, spend and much more um, um, untrendy. I would say. Um, so let me summarize. Um, one thing would be uh, trying not to invent the wheel. 
Um, if you're working on a business problem um, or another problem that is not directly related to your business, maybe someone else already solved it, um, AWS Nuke is a great tool uh, for cleaning up AWS resources. Uh, it's open source, so you can contribute as well. We are contributing to this project, um, and then everybody benefit from that. Um, so I encourage you to look into it. Um, I'll take any questions now. So we have some filtering according to time. Oh yeah. So the question was: There's all sorts of filtering options in the AWS Nuke. Uh, one was um, the question was if there's any options to filter by text. So there is an option to filter uh, by value, for example. And in this case, um, this one's for for example, this is a filter that is uh, filtering out my user. So it's basically a text filter. Um, Without tagging? OK, so the question was how to delete resources without tagging. OK, so if you don't want to use tags, you can consider one of the other options. For example, you can use a regular expression or a, a date, if you like. Um, there's many, many options. And if none of them suits you, that's the fun of being an open source project. You can yeah. contribute to it, really. And, and we will benefit from that as well. Any other questions? Okay, guess not. Thank you.